All right, welcome back. Now let's take a look at some examples. We talked about a particle moving, its position, velocity, acceleration. Now let's take a look at a specific example, kind of work it all the way through. So higher derivatives, uh, part two. All right, so let's consider a particle moving um, along a, uh, a line and its position function s of t is given by 2t cubed minus 9t squared. And I'm going to just focus on the interval um, where t is from, so on the interval from 0 to 5. We're just going to look at it over this interval from 0 to 5. What is it doing? Where, 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 what's going on here? Now, as I plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into the position function, that will tell me where it is. I'm more interested in the velocity function. Now, before we get into that, we're going to take the derivative to find the velocity function. But remember, um, the, when the velocity, my velocity function, when my velocity function is greater than 0, it's moving right in a positive direction. When my velocity function is less than zero, it's moving left in a negative direction. The sign of the velocity is going to tell you which way it's moving. Well, there's another option. What happens if the velocity is zero? What's going on if the velocity is zero? Well, the point is at rest. It's not moving, the velocity is zero. And we can think about this, it's in the process of turning directions. When the velocity is zero, it's changing directions. All right, so now let's take a closer look at this position function. And first, let's find the velocity and the acceleration equations. All right, so the velocity function is the derivative of the position. And it's a nice well-behaved polynomial. I, it's not going to give us that much of a hard time. 2 times 3, 6t minus 18t. Um, oh, that should be t squared. 3 times 2 is 6. So 6t squared minus 18t. The acceleration function is the second derivative of the position, the first derivative of the velocity. That's my acceleration. And the derivative of this would be 6 times 2, 12t minus 18. So derivatives aren't very difficult here. And, and usually, if we've got a nice, well-behaved polynomial, it, it's uh, uh, not, not a, a big issue here. All right, so I want to take a look and compare what's happening to this particle over this time interval? What, what is its position? What is its velocity? And what is its acceleration? So in order to do that, we're going to create a table. All right, so in my table, I'm going to look at different time intervals. And I'm going to look at where is it, position. How fast is it going? velocity, and its acceleration. And we're going to talk about the ideas of speeding up and slowing down. So specifically, I want to look at, at time equals 0, at time equals 1 second, at time equals 2 seconds, at time equals 3 seconds, at time equals 4 seconds, and then finally, at time equals 5 seconds. All right, now normally I would uh, put this on the board, give you a chance to calculate it, plug these values in. We're going to plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into the position function, and then the velocity function, and then the acceleration function. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and do that for us. So its position at time equals 0, 0 at 1 is negative 7, at 2 is negative 20, at 3 is negative 27, at 4 is negative 16, and at 5 is 25. Its velocity, 
its velocity at zero, at time equals zero, is zero. Uh, its velocity at one is negative 12. At two is negative 12. At three, the velocity is zero. At four, it's positive 24. And at five, it's positive 60. The acceleration, plugging in the same in numbers for time into the acceleration, at zero, it's negative 18. At one, it's negative six. At two, it's positive six. At three, it's positive 18. At four seconds, positive 30. And at five seconds, positive 42. We should also talk about the units. Here, this would be meters. Where is it? Is it in front of me or behind me? This would be meters per second, velocity, the derivative, the rate of change of the position. And then the acceleration would be meters per second per second, the rate of change of the velocity. All right, what I'd like to do now is I want to just sketch a rough graph of these three functions so we can look at them and compare them. This is also something we could do on the calculator. Um, we could take out our calculator. We've got nice, well-behaved functions for these. We certainly could put all three of them, put them in y1, y2, and y3, and let the calculator do a lot of work for us. But I, I just want a rough graph here, just so I can compare it and kind of talk about, well, what's going on. And if I have, uh, it looks like my biggest number is um, negative 27-ish, so, so let's say this represents negative 30. My biggest number, um, oh gosh, it gets up to 60 or something. I, I'm more interested, this just kind of goes out of control here, doesn't it? So, so I'm going to put a, a positive 20 up here. All right, the position function. The, po the position function is roughly cubic. And if I graph just the position function, I think it's going to look something like this. Uh, uh, notice it's negative, 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 and then it comes back up again. So um, something like that, s of t, my position function. Uh, next, I want to graph the um, velocity function, my v of t. And if I'm looking at it, zero, negative, negative, zero, it comes back up to zero when, when this is very, very low here. So uh, I think it's going to look something like, looks, looks kind of like um, parabolic, doesn't it? So there's my velocity as a function of time. What about the acceleration? What do you notice about the acceleration? Did you notice that when we actually took the derivative, the acceleration function is a nice, well-behaved line? And the acceleration function is going to look something like this. And I really should be a little bit more careful because there's a, a big story here of what's going on. When is the acceleration is zero? Um, what is the corresponding velocity? What is the corresponding position? So if we just take a look at this, and I want to ask some questions um, uh, 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 and interpret the graph that I've got here. So the first thing I want to think about is, when is the particle speeding up, and when is it slowing down? All right, so let's write this down, write the definition down, and then I'm going to come back to this screen. So speeding up. Now, speeding up, it could be behind me, moving away from me, and the velocity increasing. It could be in front of me, again, moving away from me, and the acceleration, the velocity is increasing. Um, so, whenever it's speeding up, is when the velocity and the acceleration have the same sign. When the velocity and the acceleration function have the same sign. In other words, they're both positive or they're both negative. That means it's being pushed in the same direction. When is it slowing down? Well, it could be in front of me, um, moving uh, 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 away from me, and the velocity is decreasing. So there's some sort of indication of opposite signs here. So when the velocity and the acceleration 
have opposite signs. One is positive and the other is negative. Now remember, uh, velocity being positive or negative really tells you direction. So don't make the mistake of thinking that the acceleration, if the acceleration is positive, it's speeding up, and, and negative is slowing down. Now there's, there's a little bit more going on here. All right, so this is what I'm looking for. When does the velocity and the acceleration have the same sign, and when do they have different signs? So now I'm going to go back to the original graph here. Let's see if I can fit both of these on the screen. And I want to know when is the particle um, speeding up and when is it slowing down. All right, so I'm looking for when does it have the same sign. So it looks like it's speeding up. Um, velocity and acceleration, well, zero, remember, zero is not positive or negative. So, so after zero, um, it's going to be negative, 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 all the way to here. So from here to here, my velocity is negative. So when is my acceleration negative? From here to, well, somewhere in here. So it's going to be speeding up from zero to between one and two, let's say 1.5, speeding up between zero and 1.5. Now, what happens after 1.5? My velocity is negative, but my acceleration is positive all the way till three. That means it's slowing down. So it's slowing down between one and a half seconds all the way up to three seconds. What happens after three seconds? After three seconds, positive, 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 and positive, and positive. So it's speeding up again after three seconds. And did you catch what is happening here at three seconds? When did my velocity is zero? And do you suspect there's something happening in here between these negative 12s? Would the velocity be zero? No. Not between negative 12 and tw negative 12. What would be zero? The acceleration at some point in there is going to be zero. Let's say one and a half seconds. And of course, we could find these numbers a lot more accurately by setting the derivatives equal to zero and solving to find the exact values there. If I set the uh, uh, velocity function to zero, I could find out when it's at rest, when it's a turning point, and set the acceleration function equal to zero, and I think we would find that it was one and a half seconds, and I could be a lot more accurate on my graph. All right, so th there's my first example. Now for the second example, I want to get away from actually giving you an equation. For the second example, I'm going to give you a graph. Now, the graph is actually going to be the graph of the velocity. So this is f of x equals the velocity of the function. So I'm going to try to make this a nice, nice graph here. We'll copy this down. And uh, we'll just pick some nice numbers, 3 and negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, and I'm picking a couple of points here and here to 3 and negative 3 just to kind of give us an idea of what's going on. Because we're going to have to look at slopes in a minute, aren't we? All right, so let's say at 1 second I've got this point and this point, and then at 2 seconds, and then going all the way down to, to 3 seconds. So I've got this part of the function here, this part of the function here, and then let's say from from three seconds to six seconds, it looks like that. Can you already guess what's happening here? From six to eight seconds, um, I'm gonna have a, a maximum point over here, right around seven seconds. I've got this is happening, and then uh, and then ten seconds, we'll we'll kind of trail it off and end right there. All right, so this is my velocity function. So this is measuring the velocity. And remember, velocity is in meters per second. And this is measuring time in seconds. All right, so here's a graph that shows the velocity of some particle moving along the coordinate line. So let's answer some questions. Let's talk about this and answer some questions. Um, first question, looking at the velocity, can you tell me when does it change directions?
when does the particle change directions? Oops. All right, so changing directions. What I'm going to look at is I, I want to look at when is the velocity equal to zero? That's when it's going to change directions. When the velocity equals zero. All right, so when is the velocity equal to zero? Um, at zero, the velocity is equal to zero. Well, is it changing directions or is it just starting out? We don't know what's happening over here. But certainly, at time equals two and at seven. And then it comes back to rest and it, and it stops here. So at time equals two, the velocity is zero, and time equals seven, the velocity is zero. Next, when is the particle um, moving at a constant rate? When is it moving at a constant speed, constant rate? Well, we can see that here, the velocity is not speeding up, not slowing down. The velocity is a constant in this interval right here. So it looks like from 3 to 6. I've got some sort of constant rate there. All right, a little bit trickier now. Next question is taking this graph, I want to sketch a graph of the particle speed. Now, when we talk about speed, what are we talking about? Well, speed, I, I want you to think about this. Uh, think about speed this way. Just think about speed is the absolute value of velocity. Because velocity takes into account direction, positive and negatives, and speed does not. So what I'm really, in effect, doing is graphing the absolute value of this function right here. What would that look like? Oh, that wasn't a very straight line, was it? All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So the absolute value of this function right here. So this part is, is positive. That's not going to change. But this part down here, make it absolute value. So now, all the way to six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Zero at seven. And then to eight and to 10. So this is the speed, the rate of change irrespective to direction. Now what I'd like to do is I want to take the speed function, I want to take the, the velocity function, and I want to sketch a graph of the acceleration. Let me pause for a minute, make sure that everybody's got the speed function down. I'm going to cover this up because I want to use this to do um, my acceleration. All right, so now I'm going to graph the acceleration. A of t. Now the acceleration is the derivative of this function. The derivative of this function. So um, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, so let's see what's happening here. Now here, the velocity, uh, now we think about the derivative. What is the slope of that line right there? It looks like it's a constant slope. It looks like a line. Lines have a constant slope. Rise over run. Rise three, run one. It looks like a constant three all the way up to one. At one, what's the slope of the tangent line there? So I'm going to use an open circle here, and it's constant. 
There it is. There's the acceleration. Now, what's happening between one and three seconds? What's the slope of this tangent line right here? Well, it looks like uh, rise negative six, run two. So that would be a, a slope of uh, negative three. And I'm going, so here's negative three. I'm going to put a, a, my, my zero here all the way up to three seconds. And there it is. This is a 3 and a negative 3. The slope of this line is negative 3. The derivative is negative 3. From 1 to 3. From 1 to 3. What's happening between 3 and 6? Well, it's, uh, it, it's, it's still moving. The, the velocity is, is negative. That tells me the direction. It's still moving. But there's no acceleration. It's moving at a constant rate. How do I represent that on my line here from 0 to 6? It's 0. The, the acceleration is 0. 3, 4, 5, 6. So the function would be here. What about between 6 and 8 seconds? Well, what's the slope of this tangent line? Rise, 6, run, 2. The slope looks like a positive 3 here between 0 and 8 seconds. Um, so six, seven, eight. There it is. And then what's happening between eight and nine seconds? What is this? Um, again, it's a line. It's a nice, well-behaved, constant slope. Rise, uh, negative three, run um, two, negative three halves, negative one and a half, um, which is going to be somewhere over here. So negative one and a half. So there's my acceleration function, the derivative of the velocity. Now let's ask another question about this. Um, when, now that I've got the velocity and the acceleration function, I can ask questions about when is this particle speeding up, when is it slowing down, and, and, and so forth. So um, if I take a look at this, and I don't have room to write it, but uh, when is it speeding up? When is it speeding up? Well, let's take a look. Between uh, 0 and 1 second, the acceleration is positive, the velocity is positive, it's speeding up. Between 0 and 1 seconds, it's speeding up. Now between 1 and 3 seconds, or, or I should say 1 and 2 seconds, between 1 and 2 seconds, the velocity is positive, but the acceleration is negative. So between 1 and 2 seconds, it's slowing down. Um, and uh, I've got uh, uh, from, from 2 to 3, my velocity is negative, and the acceleration is negative. So between two and three seconds, it's speeding up again. Between three and six seconds, three and six seconds, what, what's going on here? Three and six seconds, the velocity is negative, but the acceleration is zero. It is not slowing up, it is not speeding down. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's not speeding up or slowing down. Um, it's remaining at a constant rate. Between six and seven seconds, my velocity is negative, but my acceleration is positive. What does that mean? Between six and seven seconds, the velocity is negative, the acceleration is positive, opposite signs means it's slowing down. Between seven and eight seconds, my velocity is positive, my acceleration is positive, they're both positive, it's speeding up. Between eight and 10 seconds, my velocity is positive, my acceleration is negative, it's slowing down. All right, so did you catch that? Um, it's speeding up between 0 and 1, 2 and 3, and 6 and 8, and it's slowing down from 1 to 3 and 8 to 10. All right, so those are two examples of the application of second and third derivatives with a particle moving, and the AP test likes particle moving. You'll definitely see um, problems about particle moving on the AP test. All right, well, um, time to get to homework. If you've got some time left in today, uh, if not, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.